check one two one two one two one two. I think it's working now. I don't think it was working a second ago. Okay, cool. All right, nice. All right, let's get started. Let's get started in this bad boy. All right, um, I guess we can start with the background. Go to the background first. Select the background. Select cylinder. All right, now I haven't really put any thought into this piece to be honest with you. Um, instead of giving it a feel, I think I'm just going to go with kind of straight, straight up colors. So maybe a blue, saturate it a little bit, maybe darken a little bit, and I'm going to go with a gradient. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can go, go to white. Maybe something like that, maybe. Alright. And I think I'm going to darken up the top a little bit. No, that's not. messed it up. Let's try that again. Now one thing with me, I do things a billion times. I'm never ever happy with what I do also. That's another... I always look at my pieces and like, I don't dig what I do. I always look back at like my old comics and I'm like, oh, I wish I could color that over again. Even this recent Xenoscope stuff that I've done, I haven't been happy with it. Alright, now I'm going to levels. That's more what I want. Just put a little bit more white down there. Okay, now I guess I had started with this water beforehand. Let's see if I got it selected. Yeah, there it is. So I got some highlights there, and I'll go in. I'm just going to do some wacky selections. I'm going to go to some darker colors now. So just kind of doing wavy kind of selections and to create the darker kind of colors. So I'm going to go hue saturation. I, I do control U as a hotkey to pull it up instead of going to the tab. Okay, sorry, I just noticed your... Uh, your question. Yeah, you're right. This one I'm just going to do a bit more of a cell shading kind of vibe to it. Um, that's like, for me, I, I do different kind of style coloring. There's the rendered stuff and the airbrushy stuff and the cell shading kind of stuff. And This is uh, tends to be the quickest kind of way to color. Right, I'm going to make a selection of that. And so I'm going to, I like the the brown that I, I selected for the flat, so I'm going to keep that. I flatted this myself, so a lot of the colors, I, I made the flat colors of what I knew I was going to color it. So, deselect that with the selection, go to hue saturation again, then I go back down to light, kind of darken it up. And sometimes I mess with the saturation a little bit. When I, when I do my dark parts of the colors, I like to desaturate it a little bit. And then you'll see what I'll do with it in a little bit when I kind of bring the piece together using the, the colors around. So, same thing. And since I have that color selected, I'm just going to select it and just fill it. Alright, there's going to be a shadow underneath this person. So... OK, 
Okay. So, and I I have like a little bit of artistic ADD a little bit, so I, I skip around. I don't finish one part up and then go to the next part, which uh, isn't always a very good discipline to have. Cause sometimes I forget to catch stuff that I forget about. All right, I'm gonna go to airbrush now. For this one, I'm not gonna go strict cell shading. I'm just gonna kind of airbrush a little bit. I'm gonna take the opacity down a little bit so it's not so strong. So just pop it out a little bit is what I'm doing. Um, in all reality, I should probably pop this stuff out a bit more white. So I'm going to take this stuff that's up right by the, the rocks, make it as white as possible. I like that... Uh, that Hokusai, I think his name is Hokusai. He's an artist, Japanese old print artist, and I really dig his stuff. Well, I just got a book of his when Borders went out of business. They had a big art book of his on sale, and I, I picked it up. He has that one really, really famous piece you see of the wave crashing. It's, it's like a classic Japanese art piece. A lot of people get tattoos and stuff of like that, too, these days. But it's, it's pre pretty awesome. He's like a... He's like a comic artist, pretty much, in my opinion, with his art style. Okay. Yeah, I got really sad when Borders closed. I used to love going there. And they would always send, like, 50% off coupons in the mail for me, and I used to be a good excuse to go and buy books. Okay, so this one I want to do like a pink cloud for some reason. I don't know why, but I thought a pink cloud would be pretty cool. It's not like a sunset or anything. I mean, you see pink clouds when the sun's setting or the sun's rising, but I don't have that in this concept context. I might change it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I didn't really kind of create a, uh, a mood per se for this page. I just kind of... Yeah, that's exactly kind of what I was going with. Um... I love Hindi art a lot. I love uh, their, mytholo their, their mythology and their, their imagery of like Shiva and Vishnu and, and the Ramayana and all that stuff. So I love the blue skin and all those characters. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I used to have, I was in a kick a while. You, you see George Washington in my back, but that's tough background right now. Um, but I used to get like their, their, their art too. Their art's amazing too. But yeah, it's very cool that you pointed that out. And, um, this, uh, the artist who did this, Sarah Paladin, she did this piece. She does a lot of Hindi pieces, um, like you mentioned. So, uh, I definitely was keeping that in mind, which was, uh, why I wanted to go pink. So, very, very good ob observation, because, uh, Sarah Paladin, she does Hindi art as well. Alright, now I'm having a problem with my layers right now. Hold on one second. Give me a second. Okay. All right, we're back. All right, so, yes, good observation with the, the paint, because that's definitely what I was going with. So, I think I'm just going to go pretty dark. Did I, do, did I create a selection for it? No, I didn't. So let's do a selection for it. Select similar, so it gets all the pink color. And then I'm going to create a, uh, a channel for it, so I can just select it. When I want to make my deselections with the selections I have, I just hit, like, I hit Alt and Control, and then I tap on the the pen, and it deselects what I don't want in that selection. So, like, see how I'm going all outside? I'm sure you probably already know how to do this. But, um, oops, it'll, my goodness, it'll deselect what's not in that selection, if that makes any sense. Okay. See, I have no idea what that is. See, what's what's so awesome about Photoshop is that there's about maybe like 30 ways to do one c certain trick in it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, but I just make I make a uh, channel and I just hit Control Alt 
and, and shift, I'm sorry, control alt shift, and then click on the channel that I have, and then it just goes and does the selection inside of what I had selected in that channel, if that makes any sense. Oops. So, that's my personal method of doing it. So, I'm going to go dark, but I'm going to saturate it up a little bit. Normally, I desaturate with the dark part, but for this, I'm going to saturate it up. It just looked better um, saturated. So, now I'm going to probably use the airbrush some more. So, I'm going to do some fading for this now. I'm not going to go straight. So I'm going to saturate even more right now. Go up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go with the highlights. Same thing. I'm going to go with a, a pink. I was going to go with white, but it seemed like white was uh, not quite there. So I have a little pink in there. So as you can see, I'm just kind of rounding out where he kind of created the curls. Oh, it stinks about your computer. It always makes life more difficult. So I'm just doing selections and just doing really gentle airbrushing. Popping it out, rounding it out. That's all I'm doing here. Okay. Now my attention, see, like I said, I have ADD. Went back to this. So I'm going to do some highlights in the rocks. So I'm just going to make it a bit of an orangey-brown saturated. I don't like that either. I don't like that. Less orangey brown. Hmm, I don't know what this is here. You have any idea? It's like kind of like a round little thing there. I really don't know what that is. So I'll figure out what this is here. I think that's, I don't know what that is. Maybe like a water, it's a wet spot or something. But I'll bring the, the blue in on the rock in a little bit. You know what? I don't know. I don't know what the pearl of the world is. I don't know much about that. I only have very limited um, knowledge of uh, Hindu mythology. Um, I don't know if you read digital comics, but they have lots of, um, they're just one company, I don't know what it is called, but uh, they uh, put out comics on there on Hindu mythology, and it's really cool. It's like old school kind of like art, too. Um, they're really cool, and they have free previews you can download off of iTunes. But I'm pretty much going to the transition of digital comics now these days. Um, I'm slowly getting out of the, the print realm. Just like my with my music, I'm kind of going all digital right now. I kind of started on this a while back, but I'm going to keep these colors, but I'm not going to keep the rendering that I did. Yeah, I started this and then I stopped, and then I got back, I got to finish it today. Yeah, I dig the free previews in the comics, because then you can check it out and see if you like it or not. Oh, I see. Alright, 
Alright, so I'm just gonna... made digital comics, that's cool. Do you have a web comic? Cool. I'd like to check it out. I don't know you did your own art too. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I like to draw too, but I do more of a cartoony style, and I'm really, uh, I don't think my chops got as good for, uh, the comic style. Do you have your comic on Smack Jeeves? I read like Smack Jeeves comics. That's probably the one website I go to for web comics. They they put out some cool stuff every now and then. Yeah, I hear you. It's about being the being creative. Yeah, you should check out, I don't know if you heard of Smack Cheese. Smack Cheese is pretty cool. It's, um, a lot of people, you get a lot of people that go through there and kind of read new stuff on there. It's a good way to kind of promote your stuff, I think, probably. I was trying to do a webcomic, but, um, I didn't want to draw it myself. I was trying to find an artist, but, uh, yeah, I remember I heard a Drunk Duck. I haven't been there in a long time, though. And uh, there's also like Web Comics Nation. Remember that too. I know, right? See, like a lot of the artists that I, because I've I've actually paid people to do work on this web comic I wanted to do, and they they're just flakes, man. They don't dedicate themselves. Even if you pay them, who's new? Uh, the artist. Oh, I th no, Webcomic Nation's been around for a while, but, um, definitely years. Um, but, uh, I haven't been there in a long time. I actually, I've kind of been out of a webcomic kick because I've been so busy. I don't read stuff as much as I do, but there's a few comics on Smack Jeeves that I still go to because I just visited it real quick because I, I log in. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about doing that with webcomics nation. I've been there in a while for but I was definitely in a web uh webcomics kick for a while because I wanted to put out my own webcomic. But hiring artists is, is tough man to get them to commit and to to put these pages out on a consistent basis. And even when you pay them they're still flakes man so I've had nothing but bad experience hiring artists. And like the good artists man I can't afford their rates to out a page. And besides, they're already working for pro companies. But yeah, I've had nothing but bad luck creating comics so far. I did this one comic called Zombie Assault. a while back and I paid that artist man and like this is back before the zombie uh, craze jumped the shark too this is like on the right right before it kind of blew up this is years and years ago I paid this joker and he still wouldn't be professional about it 
then we kind of missed the boat on that. That was a big letdown. It's funny, like, you know, I think that's what separates people is like when opportunities present themselves and do they step up? Do they make it make that shit happen? Or are they just fine with everyday mediocrity? Yeah, at this point for me, I definitely have a few stories that I want to do as well. And, um, probably don't know, and I've had the time to kind of work on somebody as a colorist for their, their project, you know. I don't want to sound selfish, but I definitely want to put out some of my own stuff too. I did help out uh, that Andre guy for his Nomad pitch. Unfortunately, it didn't get picked up. But he's a cool dude, man, and his art's really awesome. But, um... Yeah, that was the only time I, uh... Kind of worked pro bono. I rarely work pro bono unless... It's for something like Andre for his pitch. But, um... He's, uh, he got noticed by CM B CB Belusky or whatever that dude is at Marvel, so it wasn't all bad for him putting that book out. But Image didn't want it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the case, like, yeah. This is a, that's the, exactly the case for this piece right here. This is a, actually a birthday gift for somebody. So I know the person personally. And I'm doing this as a kind of like as a gift. But as much as I would love to do everything pro bono, but like uh, I just don't have time, man. I'm so behind. I feel like I'm spinning plates, like literally. It's like I, I have all these these plates spinning, and by the time. I catch one one plate slowing down, and I spin it back up. There's another plate on the other the other end of the rooms that's slowing down, and I gotta run over and catch that plate. Okie dokie. I'm gonna um, darken the uh, cloud a little bit more. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to a hard brush now instead of the soft brush, and I'm gonna now I'm trying to figure out. 
out what should I do with these. Actually, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start the rows first. Look similar. I'm going to desaturate a little bit. Where are my swatches? Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. Okay, so just pick that color. I'm going to pop it out a little bit. I'm going to take the opacity up a little bit higher. Make it more green. That's a little too. That's too green. For me, on a personal level, I love the color green, but um, I feel like it's a really tricky color to do. That's just for me personally, because everything you know, a lot of it consists of a. Uh, the base, the mid-tone, and the highlight. And there are so, from, I think, yeah, red's, red's a trick, tricky too. Here's the trick that I learned with red. And this is my, my, this is my big critique whenever I see people coloring Spider-Man, is that when you color red, and Dan Kemp taught me this, with red, um, the trick is, and the pain with red is, is that highlight. A lot of the times when you use a white for the highlight, it pinks the red out. And a lot of times you see people color Spider-Man, even on pro Marvel comics, you see Spider-Man's all pinked out. He's not red anymore. He becomes a pink because they're trying to use a highlight color with a white kind of tone to it, and it pinks out that red because they're using the white. And the other catch with that is if you use a yellow color, to, to highlight it because you can use uh, a yellow as a, a bright yellow or a bright white to kind of pop things out generally for the most part when it's in a warm context. Um, when you use a yellow, it oranges it out. So that's a big trick with red. I've come to learn that is um, make it primarily the straight up red base and then pop it out very minimally. Don't go with kind of a grad kind of highlight. You do it with every other color in the spectrum. Red seems to be that exception where if you do that, kind of the either the yellow, white, or the white highlight, it changes the color altogether. I don't know if any of this is making sense. So for the most part, I've learned is that when you're doing red and you're kind of popping it out, just make it red and kind of pop it out very minimally with the, the highlight you need to. Because my style of coloring, it's pretty much three colors. You get the, the base which is generally dark and sometimes un unsaturated. Then you get the mid-tone, which is that mid-color, which makes the color what it is. Um, and generally, my, my style is very saturated for the mid-tone, as you can tell with her dress um, and the blue water. Um, and then there's the highlight, which pops it out, basically. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, like painting on a canvas. Very good. Um, so, And then there's the highlight, which will pop out whatever it is you're rendering. Um, that's that's those, it's those kind of three kind of bit colors that I go with when it comes to coloring things. And so like I was saying with red, that third color, that highlight, is where the trick lies in. And Dan Dan taught me this. And I guess he learned this because he was the colorist on Spider-Man. He had to constantly color Spider-Man. Um, and I've seen Spider-Man rend rendered so horribly. And I get mad whenever I see Marvel actually put out a page with, with Spider-Man where he's pink or something. I'm like, come on, man. Spider-Man's not pink, dude. It's just the artist not kind of executing red correctly, in my opinion. And I just might be being a critical jerk, but whatever. Okay, I'm going to go to these water here and finish this stuff up here. Yeah, red-orange works very well. That's actually what Dan used when he was... Render when he was uh, coloring Spider-Man. He used a red-orange for his for Spider-Man's highlights. And um, that works really well. But at the same time, you got to um, be very pinpointy with it. You can't really uh, blend it and render it out as much as 
say any other color in the spectrum in my opinion this is my opinion of course um but yeah the red orange is good i like it when people use red orange and spider-man that's what dan used to do now when it comes to coloring you're going to hear me talk about dan a lot because um He pretty much, I lived with him. He was one of my best friends. He still is one of my best friends. I haven't, don't talk with him as much as I used to. But, um, he got me into comics, the comic industry. And, um, we used to live together and we had a studio, a coloring studio. And, uh, he taught me a lot. And, um, it was really fun. He was there in the studio. He was working on, uh, Spider-Man. I was working on the Hulk and his brother, Dave Kemp, who's an awesome colorist also. He was working on Thor. It's a really fun little period. And you know, and, uh, artists were constantly coming in the house. Joe Weems, uh, Danny Mickey would be constantly coming over and stuff. And uh, one weekend, Steve, o, uh, there was a weekend Steve Olaf crashed at our place when he came down from Southern California. And Steve Olaf is just, just comic master, of course, colorist master. But then other colors like John, Justin Ponzer would come over and. Matt Mia would come over. It was cool. It was just uh, Andy, Andy, uh, Andy Troy would come over. These are all really uh, talented colors. So I don't know if you're familiar with their, their work, um, but it was cool. You just get this influx of super talent, and and um, I definitely buy to the the studio kind of mentality of making it step up your game. Because if you're around other artists who are really talented, for whatever reason, be it ego or what. It makes you step your shit up also. I used to go there and... Actually, I lived there, but uh, but it would be cool, you know, just go and see Dan coloring while he was working on Spawn or, or Spider-Man. and Just be over his shoulder and see what he's doing. He would explain to me his actual approach. We would also cover each other's butt on deadlines when... Because... Sometimes they would just throw impossible deadlines at you. And uh, we'd cover each other's butts. Like, I'd cover some pages for him on Spider-Man, and he'd cover some pages for me on uh, Iron Man. And same with Dave. We'd, we'd, we'd do each other's pages. And, see, I'm not sure I know what this is. But I'll get to that later. because I started working on this. Yeah, we got the Lotus Blossom in her hand right there. I'll get to that. I can't believe this was done two years ago. That's how bad I am, man. I was supposed to call this a long-ass time ago. Just not enough time, man. There's no time for anything. I wish we had 30 hour days. That'd be sweet. Alright, I'm going to go back to the hard brush. Yeah, I'm going to just go with the uh, a dark color here. Well, this is free. I'm not going to... I didn't... They didn't charge me for this. So... So I'm just gonna pop up certain parts of it. Okay, then I'm gonna pop up certain parts of it, just very minimally. Yeah, you know what? I, I always hate it. It's like my 
people say, oh, I'm bored. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? You're bored? You have nothing to do with yourself, man? That just blows me away when people say something like that. You know, it's like, I, I wish <laughs> I had the time to be bored. I haven't been been bored since as, as long as I can remember. There's always been something I've been trying to, like, you know, it's been on the plate that I have to do. Yeah. Oh, no ambition. That sounds like most people. It's like, oh, what is the most common trait in humans? Is it fear or is it laziness? Go do these crystals. Okay, you know, I'm at a loss as to what color to make these, but let me try. I'm just using white. I'm kind of popping everything out to white. And then I'm going to go in and airbrush. I'm going to go to the, back to the airbrush instead of the hard. Can't say I've really rendered a lot of crystals in my day, but um, from my observation, I think they kind of have sort of gradients in there and stuff like that. Yeah, they kind of fade.
so I'm going to pick the desaturate a little bit. That's not bad. That works. All right, let's go. A little drape here. There we go. We're just darken a little bit. Right now, I'm going to go create some of the, uh, the base colors.
Okay, let's pick a color for the highlight. S select that, take it out, a little, pop it out a little bit more. I'm just going to pop it to white. Just take it one more notch up. Mm. A little pinpointy white spots. Some people like this. Some people don't like this style. It's all a matter of opinion, really. I'm just going to go airbrushy for her. So just kind of rounding it. too much rendering. Just adding the shadow. My old coloring style used to be where I, I would start with the base and then color uh, midtones and then go highlights. But now, I, a lot of times with things, I don't always do this, but a lot of times I start off with the midtone and then add the the base color later. approach and style always changes I suppose. Alright, So I'm just gonna do simple rendering. Anything I'm doing poses any questions. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to go back and um, I'm going to do some research on these feathers. So um, I'm not going to be able to render these feathers 
right now. Because after looking at it, because <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to research some like uh, some medieval, uh, what do they call them? Those stained glass, those old kind of paintings, those medieval style paintings where it's like, yeah, it's kind of like a rainbowy kind of feathers. I don't know if you've seen like how they used to render angels. They gave them like kind of rainbow style feathers a lot of times. I'm actually going to do some reference hunting on that specific style stuff. Um, instead of just like uh, winging it, I'm gonna actually put some some homework into it. But uh, when I see this, I think of like those uh, those old medieval religious imageries, where they would have angels and stuff like that. And they would have really cool kind of spectrum kind of rainbow feathers. <laughs> Boring brown. They probably were just using straight up like uh, actual literal bird reference when they were uh, doing those. Probably like local hawks or something. Some local brown birds that they had. Pheasants or whatever. I think I'll put like a uh, highlight behind her. A little rim, rim shot thing coming from the moon. Now let's. I feel like I'm in the mood to kind of bring it all together. So I'm gonna use this blue that I have here, and really kind of bring the opacity down. And I kind of just that mean blue. Use the the airbrush, kind of put it into that into there, so it kind of comes together. So just very a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing for the cloud, too, and put some of the blue in the bottom there. I can find the channel. Where is that cloud selection? There it is. Just a little bit. Let's work on these 
lotus flowers. Can they be purple? Or are they generally pink? search of uh, lotus flowers. Let's see now. Yeah, they do come in a variety of colors. Let me look up Buddhist lotus flower. Alright, those seem to be an, uh, a pinkish, kind of bright pinkish color for the most part from the art I'm seeing right now. It's like a bright kind of pink. Nope, oh, there you go. You just said it. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was looking it up when you uh, said that. Alright, I found a color. I think I'll just probably reference that real quick. Sorry, I'm having a hard time here. Alright, let's check out this pink here. Mr. Scott Benson, man. Thank you for your pretty color selections. Alright, so... saturate just a little bit. Okay. So I'll just do some gradients. Airbrush, all right, good. All 
sure if I should give her. Should I give her lipstick? What do you think? I'll get the, the female's perspective. A little tint of color, you say? All right. So I guess I'll pick like a uh, little bit of pink. That's good, huh? Pop out the lips a little bit. Went to a hard brush. Do a soft brush again. I'm gonna pop out some of these uh, these lines here. I'm gonna take the flow of the opacity down a little bit. So, so, so. oops. It's a bad selection there. Okay, so now we gotta do these ribbons, uh, the Taurus horns. I'm gonna blow the moon out. It looks like we're just about done. I'm gonna add a. Uh, where's the leg? There we go. And then 
selection there and bring out the darkness there. And I'm gonna where is that selection? Where is it? Holy moly, I had it a second ago. There it is. Okay. Unrounding the darkness on the outside here. And then bring some of that blue on the skin in the background. Bring some of this brown out into the foot. Just a little bit. And here bring some of this green into it a little bit just a little bit just ever so subtly so just kind of pull in the colors from its environment into the objects just a little bit Um, I do that because it kind of brings the the piece together. So you take in the background into the actual object. Um, that's how things look. Is uh, kind of pulls in from its environment. And I still have no idea what to do this Go check out this one artist on DeviantArt. His name's like Papa Ninja or something like that. I think it's Papa Ninja. He's like an amazing artist, and he does that like that 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 thing of pulling in the background colors really well. Some some artists are really overt about when they pull in that 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 background color into the object. Some some artists are a bit more subtle about it. That's the cool thing about art. There's a billion different styles. There's not just one one way to do anything. And here's a this is a technique that Brian Haberlin taught me is that once you do a shadow condition, you can use like a really subtle um a really subtle blue or a really subtle subtle purple in that shadow. That's a bit too much. And it kinda pops it out a little bit. So I got a little subtle blue in that little shadow area. Instead of making it just a straight up color, something that Brian taught me. Okay, so I don't know what I should do about this. Obviously, I'll probably just use the uh, background color a little bit and kind of bring it out and then pop it to white, I think. Create an effects layer over the art, 
make it screen and then um, I'm going to do some effects over the moon make it glow I guess what's left is figuring out what color those ribbons are in the background. Hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. I never thought of a uh, blue being in the scheme, but it is in there, definitely, especially with the veins and whatnot. I never even thought of it that way. Yeah, well, yellow might seem like it's extending from her, her clothes. So I want sep something separate, because if we did like a yellow, let's see what it looks like. It's not bad, like a light yellow might work. Uh, I was thinking what about a b maybe black and white maybe? Maybe kind of like a yin and yang kind of thing. Let me try black and white. And and see if that. I like the sim symbolism of black and white, the duality. Well, I'm not going to make it totally black. You'll see. Well, it'll either work or it won't work. We'll see. I'll just give it a shot. One thing as a colorist is um, never use black unless you're specifically being told to, um, like when you're knocking out. Because if the artist, well, if you're using an anchor, that's, that's the first question. If the artist wanted it to be black, black, then um, they would have inked it black. Yeah, I'm going to bring some of this blue. That's not bad, huh? That works. Okay, I think we're done. I'm going to probably go in and touch up a little bit a little bit later. Actually, I'm going to put some in the eyes here. I forgot the eyes. Alright, so I think we're done. I'm, I'm going to go do some homework on the wings. Sorry, I'm not doing the wings for you right now, but I'm going to do some homework on it. And, uh, Google image some references and stuff. And I think I'm going to go for an old school kind of uh, medieval religious art kind of rainbow -y color to it. Um, this is it so far for now, and I'll, I'll, show, I'll email you the, the finished piece when it's done. You're welcome. Um, thank you for uh, helping me out with those flats. And Anytime, I'll, anytime I'm going to do a piece like this, I'll definitely hit you up and let you know. All right, save, and I think we're good. Thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.